Hi, I'm Chris Johnson from Work Visa Lawyers, and today I'm going to be talking about the big announcements about the Australian Migration Program. Uh, there was a press, a press conference today with the Minister of Home Affairs, Claire O'Neill. Uh, it was all about what's going to be the result of the migration review, uh, which we've all been waiting for for about six months. Uh, there are a number of different points I'm going to make. I'm going to have about 11. And um, some of them are definitely happening and others we need some more details. But I'll go through the changes that we can get from the speech today. So the first thing is that the TISMA will go up from the 1st of July 2023. Now the TISMA is the salary that can, that month, the minimum salary that must be paid for a 482 uh, worker. And um, it's going to go from 53,900 up to 70,000. So that's a significant increase, and um, that seemed to be related to helping to protect our workers from exploitation going forward, and um, it may affect a lot of um, occupations, uh, such as trades, um, which may uh, be around that mark. The second thing is that um, the skilled temporary workers will be given a pathway to permanent residency from the end of 2023. Now this seems to be talking about the 482 visa holders. Now the 482 visa holders, uh, some of them are on a short term stream and they're not given a pathway to permanent residency. So it seems like that is going to be fixed in some way by the federal government. Now the third thing is going to be that the points test is going to be reformed. Now this is uh, going to be a little bit terrifying for many potential skilled applicants. They haven't given us the details other than saying that they're going to try to reform it to, to mean that it provides more value to Australia. That said, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of recalculations done uh, in the next few months. Now, the fourth thing is that uh, temporary visas have been broken into three streams. So they're going to consolidate temporary visas into three streams. And there are many, many temporary visas at the moment. The three streams they're talking about is a specialised, highly skilled stream, which does sound a bit like a 400. The second one is a mainstream skilled pathway with links to the TISMET. So I'm expecting that to be a work visa where you have to get paid at least $70,000. And then the third one is an essentials industries uh, visa. So I'm expecting that to be tied to things like health industries. So then what they're, they're, they're going to consolidate them into, we don't have much more detail on that at the moment. The fifth reform is that they're looking at reforming the skilled occupation lists. Now, um, that's going to be done through the Jobs and Skills Australia. They're talking about using data to come up with what's needed and what occupations should be on the list. And Jobs and Skills Australia is going to do that. Unfortunately, that doesn't give us much clarity as what is going to be on that list or not or how it's going to function. But that is what's been announced. The sixth thing is in relation to international education. Now, international education is a huge industry in Australia. Uh, there were a number of comments about international education. They were saying they very much supported the industry, but there were also some perhaps negative comments about the need for more integrity and also for uh, Australia to offer pathways to the best and most talented graduates. So I'm not feeling like that's going to be well received and I'm also thinking that there's going to be a lot of um, uh, international institutions which, are, uh, sorry, educational institutions which are not really happy with that announcement. Another thing that they talked about, uh, the seventh factor, was greater collaboration between the Department of Home Affairs and the States. Now this would be uh, beneficial in a couple of ways. Firstly, it's probably going to help with determining the needs and, and, and also it's going to help with the overall functioning and integrity of the system. Uh, there has been a lack of coordination between the Department of Home Affairs and the states for a number of years and so any changes in that area would be uh, much appreciated. Uh, the eighth change that they talked about um, was really making changes to address the concerns that the department has got about uh, potential exploitation of workers. Uh, this is something which they haven't given great details about, but uh, one thing they did talk about was more integrity checks and being able to follow up and, and 
find out what's actually happening on the ground in Australia. Uh, the ninth thing is regional Australia and visas. Now, unfortunately, the comments made in the uh, speech today by the Minister of Home Affairs were not supporting of regional Australia. What, what she said was that the review had made comments that um, previous programs had not been as successful as they wanted them to be, and she basically said the ways to support regional migration was to support housing and infrastructure, schools and access to religion. However, my concerns with that comment is that all of those things are readily available in the cities. And so, are they really going to increase all of those things in regional Australia? Uh, it sounds a lot like they're not really going to do much in terms of regional migration. But I hopefully I'm, I stand corrected on that later on down the track. The tenth thing, and something that many people were interested in, is business and investor visas. Now, there was a couple of questions about that and she didn't directly answer it. However, within the report that's been released, there is some comments about business and investor visas. So uh, the first one is that they actually praised the uh, significant investor visa, which is actually a little bit surprising, but they did say that it could be changed in a way where um, it contributed more in terms of the needs of Australia. So that will probably be more specific um, requirements in terms of investment. Um, they also have said that there's, there's a need for reform of the business program if it's going to be kept. So I think that's going to involve probably uh, more criteria about jobs created and more specific criteria. Now the last thing is that there was a surprising statement about the need for greater identification and greater focus on global talent. Uh, th this is surprising because we didn't really know where the global talent visa was standing coming into this. Now I don't know if that means they're going to have other ways to identify global talent or if they're just going to reform and, and, and make the global talent visa more functional. I do note that um, having had a quick look at the review paper that they say that they might be looking at getting rid of the nomination process where there's a nominator um, and, and also tightening up the criteria in terms of sectors. So that's a rough run through of some of the things that have come out of the speech today. Of course, there is the actual paper here, um, which I'm going to be having a close look at over the next few days. And uh, we will have detailed detail, uh, videos and responses in relation to what's recommended in this paper uh, in, within the next week. So if you're interested in that, then please do uh, subscribe and hit like and we'll keep you updated uh, on that very soon. Thanks a lot for watching.